Did you know that right now, scientists estimate that thousands of objects from other star systems might be passing through our solar system, completely undetected every single year? So, that age-old question, are we alone? What if the answer isn't a radio signal, but a rock? Right now, an object designated 3i Atlas, roughly the size of Manhattan, is entering our solar system and it is moving so fast over 130,000 miles per hour that it must have come from another star. Its closest pass is December 17th. Now, at first, you might assume this sounds like a trailer for some Hollywood blockbuster, perhaps the latest science fiction epic about cosmic doom, but this is not fiction. This is not cinema. This is reality. This is 2025, and the object in question has a name, 3i Atlas. The 3i designation marks it as the third interstellar object ever discovered by humanity. The first was the enigmatic Oumuamua in 2017, a cigar-shaped visitor that slipped through our solar system before we could properly study it. The second, 2i Borisov, resembled a comet, though with some unusual chemical signatures. But now, Atlas has arrived, and it is already rewriting the textbooks. This isn't just a minor update. We're talking about tearing out whole chapters on how solar systems form. The assumptions we've held for decades are being challenged by this single object. It's a true paradigm shift wrapped in a cosmic enigma, forcing us to ask questions we weren't even smart enough to pose a decade ago. The discovery of Atlas jolted the global scientific community into action. Practically overnight, telescopes on every continent abandoned their scheduled programs. The James Webb Space Telescope, our most powerful observatory in orbit, turned its gaze toward this faint traveler. Even radio telescopes tuned to the whispers of pulsars and quasars shifted their focus. Why such urgency? Why the coordinated scramble because Atlas does not behave like any object we have ever studied before. It began on July 1st, 2025 at 2104 Universal Time. The Atlas Telescope in Chile, a survey designed to detect potentially hazardous asteroids, flagged an anomaly, a dim ghost-like point of light no brighter than a 19th magnitude star. To put this in perspective, the magnitude scale of astronomy is counterintuitive. The lower the number, the brighter the object. The brightest stars we see at night are magnitude one or even negative. A 19th magnitude object is thousands of times dimmer than the faintest star the human eye can perceive. In other words, it was barely there at all. But within 24 hours, the Minor Planet Center issued a circular that stunned astronomers worldwide. The object's orbit was not elliptical, it was hyperbolic meaning this was not a member of the sun's family, not an asteroid, not a comet from our Oort cloud. This was an interstellar traveler, a cosmic tourist, a visitor from the dark between the stars. And unlike the first two interstellar objects, this one was enormous, tens of kilometers across, comparable in size to Manhattan Island. Think about that. An object potentially miles wide, completely dark, tumbling out of the void. It highlights a massive gap in our planetary defense and our astronomical surveys. We're only seeing the brightest and biggest of these visitors. How many smaller ones, perhaps just as strange, have passed by completely unnoticed? This discovery is valuable because it proves the interstellar highway is far busier than we ever imagined. Then came the velocity. Atlas is moving at 58 kilometers per second, or about 130,000 miles per hour. To grasp this, consider Voyager 1, the fastest spacecraft humanity has ever built. After decades in space, it now cruises at a respectable 17 kilometers per second. Atlas is moving more than three times faster. This speed is staggering. If Atlas were on a collision course with Earth, and I must stress, it is not the impact energy would be sufficient to annihilate a continent. But the real mystery lies in how Atlas acquired this speed. 
In astrophysics, the usual explanation is gravitational slingshotting. A small body swings close to a massive star, siphoning orbital energy and accelerating outward. This is the same principle we use to fling our probes to the outer planets. But when astronomers traced Atlas's path backward through the galaxy, they found nothing. No massive star, no binary system, no stellar nursery capable of providing the necessary kick. This is the first major intellectual breakdown. The data is clear, the object is moving at escape velocity, the physics is also clear, something must have accelerated it. The fact that these two truths cannot be reconciled is the core of the mystery. It's not just that we can't find the origin, it's that the lack of an origin defies a fundamental principle of celestial mechanics. This lack of an origin point is, frankly, impossible under our current models. Every high-velocity object must have an accelerator. The fact that its vector points to an empty patch of sky is a profound contradiction. This forces us to consider more exotic, unproven mechanisms perhaps a close encounter with an intermediate mass black hole, or ejection from a complex chaotic trinary star system that has since dissipated, the silence from its background trajectory is deafening. It is as if Atlas were fired from a cannon, a cannon we cannot see. The next revelation came from the James Webb Space Telescope. Its instruments captured the spectrum of Atlas, peeling apart the faint light into a chemical fingerprint. And what it revealed stunned us. Atlas is not composed like the comets of our solar system. Our comets are dirty snowballs composed of roughly half water ice. But Atlas, Atlas has almost no water at all, less than 5%. Instead, its coma, the glowing atmosphere that surrounds it, is dominated by carbon dioxide. This suggests it formed in an environment radically different from our own, perhaps in the outer reaches of a carbon-rich star system where water ice was scarce. This alone would make Atlas a curiosity. But then came the isotope ratios. Carbon exists in two stable isotopes, carbon-12 and carbon-13. In our solar system, the ratio is well established, about 1 to 89. But Atlas has nearly double the expected ratio. A deviation so extreme, so statistically improbable, that it cannot be dismissed as error. This isn't just a minor statistical deviation. It implies a completely alien nucleosynthesis, the very process by which stars forge heavier elements. Our solar system's 1 to 89 ratio is the result of a specific history of supernovae and stellar evolution. Atlas's ratio suggests it comes from a stellar neighborhood with a completely different history, one perhaps much older, or one seeded by a type of supernova we've only theorized about. This is profoundly educational. We're not just looking at a rock, we're holding a piece of another part of the galaxy. This isotope ratio is a message from its home. It tells us that the galactic recipe for making elements isn't uniform. There are other kitchens out there running on different stoves, and Atlas is the first proof we've ever been able to actually physically analyze. Isotopes are like cosmic birth certificates. They tell us about the environment where an object was born, the star, the disk of gas and dust, the chemistry of its nursery. And Atlas's birth certificate tells us this. I was not born anywhere you recognize. But the most puzzling anomaly was still to come. When astronomers calculated its trajectory, they discovered Atlas was not simply coasting along a predictable hyperbolic path. No, it was accelerating. Not much, just a whisper, but measurable, statistically undeniable. Now, comets can accelerate. As they approach the sun, their ice is vaporized, creating jets that act like tiny rocket engines. But remember, Atlas has almost no water, and the carbon dioxide jets observed are far too weak to account for the extra push. Something else is nudging Atlas. This non-gravitational acceleration is the single most baffling data point. If the outgassing isn't pushing it, what is? Is it reacting to the sun's magnetic field? Is it shedding mass in a way we can't detect? Or is the acceleration not propulsion, but a reduction in mass? 
These questions have pushed the discussion from the known into the speculative. This is where the conversation turns from the known into the speculative. Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb proposed a provocative idea. Perhaps Atlas is not entirely natural. Perhaps it is a light sail, a thin, broad structure pushed by the pressure of sunlight itself. This is not fantasy. We have built experimental light sails here on Earth. Projects like Breakthrough Starshot envision sending tiny probes to nearby stars using this very principle. And the anomalous acceleration of Atlas matches the predictions for such a sail. Now, as a physicist, I am cautious. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. We must first exhaust every natural explanation before we leap to the artificial. But at this moment, we cannot rule it out. And that possibility that whisper of engineering changes everything. If Atlas is natural, then it is a messenger from an environment more exotic than anything we have imagined. It means planetary systems can form with radically different chemistries, different isotope signatures, different physical laws than the ones we, we take for granted. That alone would transform our understanding of the galaxy. But if Atlas is not natural, if Atlas were built then we are confronted with the reality that we may not be alone. On the Kardashev scale, which ranks civilizations by their energy use, humanity is not even a type 1 civilization. We still burn coal and oil. A type 1 civilization controls the energy of its planet. A type 2 harnesses the power of its star. A type 3 commands the resources of its entire galaxy. And a type 4 a civilization with mastery over the energy of the universe itself would be godlike by our standards. If Atlas were engineered, it could represent technology millions, perhaps billions of years ahead of us. A message or a probe launched across the interstellar dark by beings whose capabilities we cannot even begin to fathom. Now, let me emphasize, Atlas will not strike Earth. It will pass harmlessly through skimming near Venus's orbit and vanish forever into the abyss. The danger is not physical. The danger is existential, because if the data hold, then our most cherished assumptions about planetary formation, about chemistry, about physics itself may be incomplete. And if the artificial hypothesis proves true, then the greatest question humanity has ever asked, are we alone? That will be answered not with words, but with an object silently hurtling through our solar system. Here is the urgency. We have only days left. Atlas is already fading. The window for high resolution spectroscopy for detailed observation will close in 72 hours. After that, it will grow too dim for even our largest instruments to study. This is a once in a century opportunity. When Atlas departs, it will not return and we will be left with only the data we can scramble to collect right now. It is as if the universe has handed us an exam, a final exam, one we are not prepared to take. So what is Atlas? A natural body from a star system, utterly foreign to us? A relic of planetary chemistry unknown to science? A technological artifact, a probe sailing on the light of distant suns? We do not yet know, but what we do know is this. Atlas is a messenger, a reminder that the cosmos is deeper stranger and more mysterious than we dare to imagine. And as we strain our instruments toward this faint streak of light, we are also straining our imaginations, stretching the boundaries of human knowledge, peering into the unknown. This is what gives me hope, because in moments like this, humanity is united not by fear, but by wonder. Across nations, across disciplines, across cultures, scientists are pooling their resources, racing against time, not to save us from destruction, but to glimpse a truth larger than ourselves. That is the essence of science. That is the essence of being human. And perhaps when our descendants look back at this moment, they will say, 2025, that was the year we first glimpsed the wider ocean. That was the year we realized we were not the only swimmers in the cosmic sea. So I leave you with this thought. Atlas is not here to destroy us. Atlas is here to humble us, to remind us that we are children in a universe filled with mysteries. 
it asks us a question, will we listen? Because history does not give us second drafts of moments like this. Once Atlas slips into darkness, it will be gone. But perhaps, just perhaps, it has left us with something more lasting, a whisper from the stars, a message written not in words, but in motion, in chemistry, in mystery, a reminder that the story of the universe is still being written. And we are fortunate enough to be here now to read the next chapter. The real lesson here, the one that Atlas teaches us, isn't just about astrophysics. It's about humility. It's the profound, valuable reminder that no matter how much we think we know, no matter how advanced our technology becomes, we are just beginning to understand the universe. We are standing on the shore of a cosmic ocean and an object like Three Eye Atlas is a message in a bottle that has washed ashore, written in a language we don't yet understand. It forces us to remain curious, to keep questioning, and to accept that the most exciting truths are the ones still waiting to be discovered. What do you think? What is your theory about Three Eye Atlas? Is it a natural marvel or is it something more? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy grappling with these big cosmic questions, make sure to subscribe for more content that explores the deepest mysteries of our universe.